Okay, tweeters, let's go, let's go, let's go. Big day today, big day today. We're going to cover my top 19 and number 20 today. Uh, I told you guys we would get to it this week, and we're going to do that. So, if you didn't know I was an Oklahoma fan, you do now. Mixon, Bradford, Mayfield, that's who I am. Rocking the go today. I uh, change pretty much every day. Now that I know we got some people on here and some people are talking, we're going to take the headphones off. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you back. You know, I appreciate the followers. I appreciate the gaining every day. You know, we've got some pretty big content coming up. The Big Loser group is, or No Loser group actually, is what we just started promo on the website. Check it out, 60% off, 80% off. Uh, really good deal for new subscribers. You know, this is the best time for you guys to start joining because especially with the rookie content coming out and you know OTA starting to get over and rookie camps getting over, you can get ahead of the game. And that's why we started doing what we started doing. Because I want you guys to be the best in your league. And for that to happen, we got to go. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, let's get to my number 20 guy. And believe me, I really considered moving this guy up because of where he was and what I think he can do. But I'm a massive fan of Brian Burns. I think that he could be the type of player that really makes a difference. Right? Being drafted to the Carolina Panthers, um, really big for his size, really solid dude, runs a 4 5 40 defensive end rush end. Uh, out of Florida State. Uh, if you knew me, I was younger. I was a big Florida State fan. Favorite player was Derek Brooks uh, when he was in college. Huge, you know, aspect of how he played the game. And that old group was just a real solid Florida State Seminoles team. You know, what I see out of Brian Burns is a speed rush guy who – Really, when he gets after it, the dude keeps going, man. I mean, he runs dudes down. He's got, you know, pretty solid stats, 50-something tackles, 10 sacks last year. On Let's really, you know, be honest here. Florida State was abysmal the last two years. And they really didn't believe, even belong even in the ACC, let alone in talks of where they were a couple years ago with Jim, Jimbo Fisher. And... I think I would like to see him make a about the same transition as he did last year in college, but he's got a lot of intangibles that people don't really think about. He's got a really good spin move. I mean, he, he bounces outside and has a good spin move. His third step is important, right? Because a lot of guys have a really good quick step and first step that they go after. But to have a third step to extend past a defensive tackle, uh, defensive lineman, or even a tight end, if they're stupid enough to try to put a tight end on this guy, he's just going to embarrass them because he's tall, 6'5", 250 pounds. He's got room to put some weight on, which I think he'll do, probably get to 270 when it's all said and done, maybe, maybe even 285. And I really don't think the speed's going to drop off. I mean, he, this dude was this close to run the, a 4'4". I mean, it was like a 4'5'2". So I can see him make a move. Now... There's been a lot of aspects in who I should compare the guy to. Well, the guy that I compare him to, personally, is Floyd out of Chicago, right? Solid player, same size, you know, 6'4", 6'5", 260 pounds. Um, Floyd, in the aspect, you know, both have very good speed, both have uh, played the rush end, uh, both very good athletes, more... But Floyd is one of those guys that developed into a better football player than he was coming out of college because he really was more of a basketball player turned into a football player. And with Brian Burns, he just was a stud on a really bad defensive line, to be honest with you. Now, they got better and better, you know, a couple years ago, but the last few years he's been kind of the focal point and to anchor that defense – and, he, and it's shown that. And to have 10 sacks last year, 50 tackles, you know, that's what you expect out of the guy. And I really think that 
um, him being like Leonard Floyd is going to help him. But I actually think he's going to have better stats than Leonard Floyd. I think he's a day one starter. I think he moves right into Carolina's defense. And I really see him moving forward, especially because he's going to be opposite side of Luke Keekley if that's what their original plan is. You got to focus on Keekley more than the defensive line a lot of times because that guy's, well, he's a different player than any other linebacker in the league in general. So in that aspect, I really think he has a good year. I think he gets to 50 some tackles. I think he gets to eight, eight to 10 sacks. And you should watch him. He could be the boom. He could be the one guy that moves forward and has a really solid year of the defensive lineman. And he's, I get that he's number 20 in my draft, but I'm not kidding you. I almost put him in my top 15. He was so close. Dude's really solid, and he's he's a beast, guys. Uh, on to my next guy um, is Mac Wilson, right? Mac Wilson is, without a doubt, one of the better coverage linebackers in this year's draft. Having six interceptions in college, he didn't even become a starter until his last year in college, pretty much because Alabama just can continues to reload all the time and with that aspect you really (laughs) know that they just got more and more guys that they just keep throwing through but I think he's a very good coverage linebacker I'd like to see him be able to stuff the run better and in his he's 6'1 6'2 you know been measured different times uh, at 240 pounds I would like to see him get to 260 um, muscle up and get after guys I do. His only weakness for me is he's almost a little too instinctive, and he tries to overrun plays. He's great in the back end, and I think that's where he's going to see a lot of playing time this year is on the outside linebacker and tra- third down you know, linebacker spot, passing downs. That's where I think you can see him because he can play with you know, most tight ends in the league and even some receivers because he has the speed to do that. The crazy thing is, and the person that I'm going to tell you who he compares to for me, you're going to be a little like, why? But you're going to have to stick with me on this one. I think he's a lot like C.J. Mosley. Now, if you remember C.J. Mosley coming out of college, he was a top 15 draft pick expected. He had some injury problems, but he was a generation player for the Tide. And he has been that for the Ravens, obviously, just now beginning to trade to the Jets, which I don't know why. I mean, he's a perfect example of how to anchor a defense. And he's a great coverage linebacker. He's a great um, tackler. He's a ball hawk. And that's where I see the difference in Mac Wilson. He's a ball hawk. He knows where the ball is going to be. He, he's a very instinctive ball player. They ran the same 40 time. They both went to this same college. Now, the reason why I tell you Mac Wilson dropped a lot farther, he didn't play much, right? I mean, he he didn't start till his senior year, right? Play, he did play 12 games and had a lot of tackles his junior year, but he didn't play much. Or, and even so his sophomore year. His freshman year played eight games. You know, didn't play a whole lot because they were loaded. And two years ago, they won a national title on a loaded team. But he, he played the coverage you know, linebacker basically the entire season before last year. And last year, he was the basically roaming linebacker. If you've watched the OU game or um, the Georgia game, he was the guy that they basically focused on, hey, this guy is going to be more of a spy than anything else, um, which is a, a good role for him to transition to the pros. And you see that even in OTAs, they really like what they got with him. And I think he could be a steal of the draft in the fifth round. I mean, to get a linebacker that you could see that could be in your system for the next five years and maybe even longer, especially with Joe Schobert and Christian Kursky on contract years, he could be a guy that moves in and gets a lot of playing time. He definitely played a ton on special teams, and he will definitely be the, the fourth guy. He's a lot like Jannard Avery where they didn't know what they had with a guy and Jannard Avery became a star last year. And I see that out of Mac Wilson. You know, and because that, you know, you see the comparison to CJ Mosley. 
The dude's an all-pro linebacker. He's a coverage linebacker. He's a ball hawk. They both went to Alabama. They both ran the same 40 time. Mac wasn't a better vertical than he did. He had more batted passes. And the difference is, is one guy goes at the line and looks for a tackle. The other kind of backs off and, and plays his instincts. Now, I think Mac Wilson's good at shedding linebacker or shedding linemen and getting to a tackle. And I think that's where you'll see the difference in him later on. And I think he's a great guy to grab for Dynasty. I think maybe not this year. It'll be a big year, maybe a 30-tackle year, 40-tackle year guy. But the following years, I see him being a big role for, you know, the Browns and moving forward. Guys, it's been a quick one tonight. I appreciate you. You know, keep following us. Um, Retweet as much as possible. We put out new content every day. Me, the tipster, chef, B Stew, and my buddy Jordan, Fifty Shades of Drunk. You know, my last name's Gray. I don't think I think I should go with that. Fifty Shades. Nah. It's what we do. I'm the rookie guru, right? We gotta keep with this. So, if you got questions, we got the answers. Again, the promo's going on. It's time to go. So let's go, let's go, let's go!